All right, so we are going to do problem 2.5 out of Griffiths. We're going to find the electric field above the center of a circular loop uh, with uniformed charge density. Before I solve this, I would like you to please like the video and subscribe to my channel. I'm trying to grow it, so I appreciate all the support I can get. And now let's get into the problem. So for problem 2.5, we have this situation where we have this circle and somewhere let's call it here, but it could be anywhere, is the distance, which I'll call script R, from some infinitesimal uh, line segment to the point that we're interested in, okay? So hopefully you can kind of see, okay, for this example, you might have an E-field point this way. If you were over here, you might have an E-field point this way. If you were here, it would go this way. And all that I'm trying to show and hopefully convince you of is the symmetry of this problem. And the symmetry of this problem is as you go around the circle, because it's a symmetric circle, the components in the X direction will cancel out. And you'll only have the components add in the Z direction. Okay, so for this E field here, there will be another one opposing it over here. And that'll be true all the way around. So the E field, let's start by writing our main equation down. Our electric field is going to be 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, our constants. And then we're going to multiply that by the integral of, so our charge, dq, is going to be, in this case, it's a charge per length, or it even tells us it carries line charge lambda. So the charge per length, or I'm sorry, the charge is the charge per length times the length. So normally we have a dq. I'm sorry, that should be a lambda. Normally we have a dq, but instead we're going to have lambda dl. So that takes the place of your q. And then we have our script r squared. Now we only want the component pointing in the z direction. So we need to think about this a little bit. If this is our angle theta, this is our angle theta, well, we just want the adjacent part of this. So the adjacent part of that, well, that's going to be your cosine term. So we're just gonna be multiplying by cosine theta and this will be all in the z hat direction since z is pointing up, okay? So now we need to rewrite these in terms of what we know. To start off, cosine theta is what? Adjacent over hypotenuse? Well, the adjacent is going to be the height z and the hypotenuse is script r. So what is script r? Well, hopefully that's easy to see. It's just going to be the square root of r squared plus z squared. It's the hypotenuse of that triangle. Okay. All right, fantastic. So let's rewrite our electric field in terms of all of this. We still have the one over four pi epsilon naught. We're integrating lambda z over, so we have r squared from here, oops, and also an r from here, so it's going to be an r cubed, and r cubed is just r squared plus z squared to the three halves. dl, and again, this is in the z hat. So lambda is a constant, z is a constant, that's not changing, the radius isn't changing. So all of this is actually constant. And the only thing we need to integrate is the integral of dl. And of course, we're gonna integrate over this whole circle, the whole circumference of the circle. So we'll integrate from zero to two pi. And that is of course just two pi. Everything else can be factored outside of the integral. So then our electric field, is equal to 1 over 
4 pi, epsilon naught, 2 pi, lambda, z, divided by r squared plus z squared to the 3 halves. Uh, we actually need to do 2 pi r. There we go. This should be an r here. Because we're going around the circumference of that circle. The circumference of that circle is 2 pi r. It's not 2 pi. The circumference of the circle obviously must depend on the radius. So that needs to be there. I'll just put the r at the end here. And this will be, again, this is to the 3 halves. And that's in the z hat direction. Okay. Okay. So that's kind of how you do the problem. You set up your main equation. And once you have that, you need to substitute your DQ, depending on what type of problem is. In this case, it's a line charge. You try to take advantage of any, any symmetries. In this case, we only needed the Z hat component. And then you usually rewrite your trig functions and your R squared as something else. And once you do that, well, then you just integrate. So hopefully that makes sense. If it did, please like and subscribe. I'd greatly appreciate it, and I'll post more videos.